Tonight I will see Santa Claus for the 39th time. It doesn't matter how many times you have met him, whether you have a hundred trips around the sun or not one, tonight is a night of magic. You see, for many of us growing up, tonight was the one night out of the year you could have eternal hope. Hope that tomorrow would bring the doll, ball, bike, sled, clothes or other gifts you had asked Santa for months earlier. Tonight you put all of your faith in the magic of Christmas. That when your eyes opened at the crack of stupid tomorrow morning, the gift you wanted most would be there. When you're a kid living in rural Midwestern Ontario, what I didn't realize at the time was that as a child in a middle class family, you asked Santa for a lot. We waited all year for the Sears Christmas wish book, which, with the help of my mother, who was the rural mail lady, arrived the first day it was available. The poor book was shredded on the floor mere weeks later. My brother and I had gone through it with pencils, markers, then eventually scissors and composed a letter to the big man in red. We would send with mum to work that letter only to get a letter back shortly after from the North Pole, postal code H-O-H-O-H-O. Those letters from Santa told us of the forever hope that this day holds. Dear Dan, I received your letter when I looked in my book so far you've been a good boy this year, or something to that effect. I understand you want a Nintendo for Christmas, or a keyboard, or a GT Snow Racer, or a, or a, or a. As you age, that aura usually became more extravagant, however what's even better was opening a Christmas gift from Chris Gingle before the break of dawn on Christmas morning, and finding out the last gift was usually what you asked of him and wanted the most. The year was 1989. I was seven. My brother and I got an original Nintendo from Santa Claus. I remember jumping so high when I opened the present that day that my grandmother and my father both smiled and laughed at our excitement. After a Christmas breakfast and before extended family came later in the day, we played Super Mario and Duck Hunt. Those were the games that came with it for hours. As the years went by, that little gray box and the associated games you occasionally had to blow to get to operate brought time playing games against dad, but also seeing a mum beat our high score at Mario when we were away at school and coming back home off the school bus. But I digress. Imagine, if you will, you have been on this earth for a hundred years. What have you seen at Christmas? Born in 1921, you are the baby of possibly a wartime love that burns brightly between your parents, who met while they were in Europe. By 1931, you're 10, living as a child through the dirty 30s. By all records, it was a difficult time. In 41, at age 20, you're probably or could maybe be on your own front lines of your own war. As 51 rolls around, you would be 30, and Christmas may have bought children of your own and the happiness that comes with seeing their smiles after gifts were unwrapped. By 71, you've seen a man land on the moon. By 91, the Hubble t Space Telescope. And at the age of 100, you've lived and seen through a lot. If you ask many centurions, they will tell you, many of those memories were marked by Christmas. If this is your first Christmas, welcome young one to a world of hope. Tomorrow for one day we put all the troubles, fears, worries away to live in love. You will see so much over your lifetime, you'll ask for toys we don't even know exist yet. Yes, you'll be left facing some of the myriad of issues that my generation and the ones before you have left. You will have to solve those in order to live, but tomorrow, for as long as you live, may this be special. May it be a day you learn there is more to life than material things. May you be blessed with a day of family. May you be, get what you asked for from Santa, and may the day forever be filled with joy. Because in 39 years of meeting Santa Claus and now being chosen to help tell you where he is, Tomorrow will always be a special day, a day of peace. 
I've forever been a Garth Brooks fan, and if you've never sat and listened to the song Bella Wood, I implore you to do so. I leave with you this line describing the parting of enemy soldiers after Christmas Day in 1914. He raised his hand and smiled at me as if he seemed to say, here's hoping we both live to see us find a better way. Tomorrow brings hope that a better way forward is there for all of us, for those of the less fortunate and to the 1%. Tomorrow is Christmas. That's the way I see it. From behind the lens, I'm Dan Gray. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.